Hi guys, my name is Neha Gupta, and I am your mentor for current affairs at this organization. So I'm glad with the kind of response I have got for my video, my first video that has been launched yesterday itself. So many of you have asked me this question that whether we are going to continue with the series or not. So let me assure you guys that we are definitely going to uh, continue with this series in a long term, in the long term as well. So do not worry about this thing. And yes, I am also assuring you of the quality of this video. So my effort will be towards reducing your effort. So I will always try to minimize the amount of facts as well as try to present the, those facts in a manner so that you can easily remember those facts through concept. You don't have to mug up the facts. You will easily get to uh, memorize the facts by understanding the basic story behind that news. So that will be my motto. Now, second thing that I want to tell you that many of you have asked me questions like Shivani and Anand have asked me questions in the comment section. So first of all, let me answer the question of Anand. So Anand has asked me the question that what is the official name of Parsec's naval exercise? So guys, do you remember? I have uh, told you about Parsec's exercise that has been conducted by the Quad grouping, uh, by India with each and every country of Quad grouping separately. So Parsec is the official name of that exercise, Anand, and there is no other name of that exercise. Now, secondly, Shivani also told me to cover IBC Amendment Bill 2020. So in this video, we are also going to cover that. So now this slide reminds me to again remind you that you have to subscribe to our channel in order to get the latest notifications about the video so that next time when I come live and when I my, when my video is on the YouTube, you get instant notification and you do not miss out on important information. So why wait? Do subscribe to our channel and join the Telegram group as well. In this slide, we have five questions or five news items that we are going to cover. First is about five task forces of MSME. Second is about a roundtable on biodiversity. Third is about technology vision for cybersecurity that has been released by RBI. Fourth will be about IBC Second Amendment Bill. In this news, I will be detailing about the features of this bill as well as about a recent point, uh, recent announcement the, uh, made by Ministry of Corporate Affairs in regard to the IBC. So quite an important news that I'm going to cover in the later half of this video, but do not leave the video in the middle by thinking that this information is not relevant because my, uh, my effort or my motto is always to put the relevant and appropriate news for you guys. So you, uh, you, can do, uh, you can pay me back in the form of watching this video and memorizing the points that I am telling you because they are very important for you. And I just want to tell you that a teacher's success lies in the student's success. So you can get success by remembering the points, by remembering the uh, subjects that you have for your examination. And lastly, we will be discussing about uh, an obituary. Why is this person an, uh, an important personality? Why have I taken up uh, J Dean Jones? We will be discussing that also in the last part of our video. So now quickly begin the first question without wasting any time and without discussing anything else. So our first question is about the task forces formed by the central government for promoting MSMEs in various key sectors. So how many task forces have been formed by the uh, central government? It is five. For working in how many sectors? Five. So five task forces for working in five different sectors. I think this is very easy to remember. Panch Panch. Panch Panch ka pair hai. Panch uh, task forces form hui hai. And these five for, uh, task forces will work in different five 
uh, segments. Now, what are those segments and what are those responsibilities that have been given to these five task forces? Now, guys, in order to make you remember those uh, points, I have drawn this smart art. In this smart art, you can see the points, one-liners, in which you can remember the different areas of the five task forces. For the phase, uh, let me tell you that for the phase one point of view, do, you do not need to remember these five points. Just remember the five uh, task forces and their number of areas in which they will work. So five, five, this is the main uh, question that will be asked in the phase one examination as I, in my opinion, as I'm saying it from my experience, because this is, quite in depth and this kind of depth is asked in the phase two examinations of uh, RBI, SEBI, NABAD. Uh, yeah, in these kinds of examination, you generally see the depth level of questions like this. So this is uh, quite, this is in quite depth. So quickly discuss the five areas and then we will jump on to our second question because as i mentioned that this is not very relevant for phase one examination so you need not to mug up the facts first area is industry 4.0 which is characterized by ai 3d and virtual reality industry 4.0 is related to technological development of industry second area is export promotion and import reduction to make india a global manufacturing hub. This is the uh, manifesto of the government. This is the agenda of the government to make India a manufacturing hub. So we have already uh, listened to it many a times. I don't think that you need to remember it. You need to put an extra effort to memorize this thing. So first area is industry 4.0. Second is export promotion. Third is to improve the schemes, cluster schemes to help MSMEs at all levels. So this is very easy. If you don't incentivize the MSMEs, how will they produce more? And if they don't produce more, how are you expecting them to export? So this is how the government will do, uh, will promote MSMEs. So this uh, third task force will work towards improving the cluster schemes. Uh, the basically, the government schemes for MSMEs. Fourth area will focus on how to integrate the technology centers. Now, why will we need to integrate technology centers? The need is to help MSMEs. If the technology centers are integrated, they are working in uh, unison, only then they can help MSMEs as well. So this fourth area will be to help MSMEs through the technology centers. Now fifth area or fifth task force will work towards exploring the market competitive schemes. And these market competitive schemes will help the MSMEs to grow more uh, competitive and to become more uh, efficient. So in order to bring efficiency in MSMEs, this fifth task force will work on market competitive schemes. So these are the five broad areas in which the five task forces will work. Nothing uh, very difficult to, uh, uh, difficult to remember. I hope that I have made it easy for you guys to remember the functions of those five task forces. Even if you don't remember, then it is not a very big issue for phase one guys for phase two you have to remember the five areas as well so if you are preparing for any examination you have to uh, remember the functions as well so there is no leeway for you to escape you have to eventually remember the task forces as well so that is why i had put it put this smart art now let's discuss the Second question of the day, which is asking us about the country, host country of the ministerial online roundtable 
titled as Biodiversity Beyond 2020. Building a shared future for uh, all life on earth. So basically uh, a ministerial round table. Round table is like a conference. So a virtual round table of ministers was held on biodiversity. Now which country is the host? The answer is China. Now guys, let me tell you that China is also the host of another summit and that summit is also on biological diversity. Now guys, can you tell me that which summit am I talking about? Come on, can you guess it? So it is COP15 that will be held in 2021, hosted by uh, China in Kuming. Now I am here missing out a very important aspect and that aspect is the name of the conference itself. So the name is UN Conference on Biodiversi Biological Diversity. So COP14 of UN Convention on Biological Diversity that will be held in 2021 in Kuming, uh, China. Now guys, you have to remember the city as well because the uh, level of questions that has that is being asked in the examination nowadays has been raised too difficult so there are high chances that they can easily ask you the city where the cop15 is going to be held so you have to have to remember the city the year the name of the convention and the edition that is 15th edition of COP and that is of biological diversity okay so I hope that I have made it uh, easier for you to remember the facts you can remember it through pointers I remember the things through pointers and I use pointers on my fingertips first is COP 15 of UN uh, convention on biological diversity 2021 Kuming China so this is how I try to remember the points. Now you will also have your own method of memorizing the things. So I hope that this way, in this way, through these pointers, you will easily be able to memorize this thing. Now we are also going to have, the globe is also going to face, or not face exactly, is also going to witness another summit that is going to be held at the end of this month only. Now guys, can you uh, guess what this summit is? Let me tell you. So it is UN Summit, UN Biodiversity Summit. Now this summit will be held in New York. Now you, New York is special. Do you know why? Can you guess why New York is special? Because you, New York has the uh, head office or headquarters of United Nations. So this summit, Bio Biodiversity Summit is going to be held at the headquarters of United Nations. Now, I hope that it is easy for you guys to remember the venue of this summit that is going to be held at the end of this month only. Now, the other thing that we have to discuss here is the theme of the Bio Biodiversity Summit. So the theme is United So this is the theme, United Action on Biodiversity for Sustainable Development. I hope that it is easy for you to remember. You can easily remember it in this way that a Biodiversity Summit is happening and this summit is going to take, uh, is going to have discussions on how to strengthen biodiversity conservation. Okay, so unified action, united action for biodiversity for sustainable development. So we have three keywords 
action biodiversity sustainable development so in this uh, in this manner through these three keywords you can remember the theme as well that it is united action on biodiversity for sustainable development so i think i have discussed all the so uh, all the things that there are about the summits now i have one another important part to be discussed and that is the un decade on biodiversity guys do you know which decade or what is the span of which uh, or which are the years that we celebrate as un decade on biodiversity so it is 2011 to 20 so 2020 is the last year of the un's decade on biodiversity un uh, 2020 to 2030 is the un decade on action sorry un decade of action so in this 2020 to 2030 in a span of 10 years united nations will strive to achieve their sdgs sdg is sustainable development goals so the uh, the decade 2020 to 2030 is the decade of action in which uh, the countries would really do something in on ground in order to achieve sustainable development goals and the sustainable uh, sorry un decade on biodiversity is 2011 to 20 so this is very important from exam point of view so you need to remember it as well now we have the third question in which we will be discussing about the technology uh, about the vision of rbi for strengthening cyber security of urban cooperative banks now urban cooperative banks are quite in news so you should listen to this news very carefully it is very important for your examination if you are appearing for any kind of banking examination because we are talking about the regulator of banks so that is why this is very important so uh, this is a technology vision document for strengthening cyber security of urban cooperative banks during 2020 to 2023 so we have been given a year so by 2023 all the actions all the points that are mentioned in this document will be achieved or rbi would strive to achieve those objectives which are mentioned in the document by the year 2023 so do remember the years as well now under this document we have a five pillared approach which is named as guard to strengthen the cyber security of ucbs now what does u stand for in the full form of guard so quickly uh, quickly discuss the answer to this question the answer is utile and now i will be moving on towards the full form of guards so the full form of guards is governance oversight utile technology investment appropriate regulation and supervision robust uh, collaboration developing necessary it and cyber security skill set now there is now if for the examination point of view for phase 1 examination point of view there is a uh, very high chances that they can ask you the name of the five pillar approach the mnemonic of the five pillar approach that is guard or they can ask you as i have asked in the question that what is what does the u stand for in the full form of guard okay so this is how the question can be put up in the examination or they can directly ask you about the name now in the uh, the sub pointers which are mentioned here first of all let me tell you that this picture has been taken from the official website of rbi so this is quite very authentic itself now that the thing that i was telling you is that the sub pointers are not required to be learned by you guys because nobody is going to ask you about the sub pointers at any stage of examination you only need to remember these points 
which is the guard which is the basically full form of guard you need to remember only those points and the number of total action points mentioned in this document so how much how many action points have been mentioned it is 12 so these are the action points that rbi will work on in order to strengthen the cyber security framework of you know, uh, urban cooperative banks so that is all about this news that we should remember in order to clear the examination and now comes our fourth question of the day ibc second amendment bill 2020 so first we will be discussing about the features of this bill and then we will move further towards this question so the first uh, first of all this second amendment bill amends the ibc that is insolvency bankruptcy code of 2016 this is a very obvious fact and i know that all of my students would know that insolvency bankruptcy code was in implemented in 2016 and even if you don't know or even if you did not know till now now you know that it was in 2016 this amends this okay now what are the features do remember this thing that there are only two key features of this bill in order to clear the examination we will focus only on the two important aspects because that is the summary of this bill basically first is that the bill prohibits uh, an initiation of resolution process insolvency resolution process on defaults that arose after march 25 now march 25 is the date of national lockdown so when the no lockdown was imposed people were stopped from going to their jobs and the, if the people are not going to their jobs how will they earn and if they are not earning then how will they pay their loans and if they are not paying their loans then obviously their loans will be categorized as npas and uh, sorry not npas we are not talking about npas here because the npa is the uh, domain of banks we are talking about creditors here so if the people are not uh, repaying their loans then obviously creditors will initiate insolvency proceedings against them so in order to uh, protect the companies from going insolvent or uh, in order to prevent the cre uh, creditors from initiating resolution proce proceedings against those companies this bill has been passed by the parliament so basic uh, basically both the houses of parliament uh, have passed this ibc amendment bill and it is soon going to be converted into an act once the president of india assents to this gives his assent to the bill so that is the first uh, feature of this bill that it prohibits initiation of fresh default uh, fresh corporate resolution proceedings now if you have given the loan during loan before uh, the nationwide lockdown and if the person is unable to repay your loan due to the national lockdown or during the national lockdown you cannot initiate any new insolvency proceeding against that person because it is eventually not his fault also because he is not able to go, go to his work so how is he going to pay you back so that is the main idea behind uh, this feature, behind in including this prohibition in this bill. Now the second feature is very important. It's very, very important. So do listen to me very carefully. This bill empowers central government Uh, for suspend for suspending the IBC for one year. So what is the tenure max for 
the central government can suspend IBC, it is one year. For a maximum period of one year, IBC can be suspended by central government through notification. Notification means that central government has to notify uh, the uh, public first before suspending the act, before suspending the code. Now, I hope that you have got your answers to this question. Guys, do you remember that in the beginning I have told you that Ministry of Corporate Affairs has made a very significant announcement regarding IBC. So what is that announcement? Do you know? Can you guess? Okay, let me tell you that the announcement is that IBC has been suspended for three months. Now, initially um, IBC was suspended for, uh, from March 25 to September 25. So it was for a period of six months. Don't remember the dates. It is not required for you to remember the dates. Just remember the total months. So it is nine. So far, IBC has been suspended for nine months till December 25. So I hope that it is very clear for you guys the points that you need to remember. Just remember the two features that I mentioned about this bill and remember the current uh, current suspension period that is three months and the total suspension period is nine months and most importantly the tenure for which IBC can be suspended by central government is the crux. You have to remember that because it is very important for the exam point of view and there is nothing else to be discussed. We have discussed, discussed everything about this bill and guys if you have any kinds of doubts and if you are not able to understand this thing, you can ask me in the comment section. I will again elaborate on it in, uh, in the Monday session, okay? And now the time has come for us to discuss the last question of the day. So we have to discuss about Dean Jones. Who is Dean Jones? Why is he important for us? Why have I taken this uh, man for, discuss for discussion? The reason behind this is because he is the legendary batsman. Uh, and if you see the Hindu newspaper of today, then you will find a whole page dedicated to Jones. So now you can yourself understand how important this personality is and how many, uh, how greater chances are for, uh, for this man to come in the examination. So you really need to know about this man. So this man belongs to Australia. So he is the Australian legendary batsman. And in this slide, I have put his image, which has got a little blur. So if, in, if you can see him clearly, then it's well and good. But if you can't, then I can't do something about this. I can't do anything about this. So I have put this picture because as you know that pictures help us to memorize the things better. So if you can memorize him through his picture, so it's well and good. And that is why I have put his picture here. So he's Dean John, who is the Australian batsman. You can see the bat in his hand. And if you can memorize it in this way, then it's amazing. Okay, so here comes our session to an end and I hope that you have liked our session and you will again come to this uh, series for the next, uh, next lecture and also mention your doubts if you have any kinds of doubts in the comment section below and if you have any kinds of suggestions that you want to share with us then do also do mention those suggestions in the comment, sections, uh, comment section below. Thank you so much.